Hello. Today we're in the shed rather than the garage and behind me, down there, if you can see it, is a flathead. Today what I want to do is illustrate a method to establish top dead centre by two methods. One using a positive stop and one using a cable tie. So you can do it with the heads off or the heads on. Preferably with the heads off. Um, I'll then show you how to establish whether it's going to be firing on a number one or number six cylinder at that top dead centre. Um, I'll also show you how to make a pointer, simple pointer, that works okay. Okay, let's get cracking. It's not in very good condition. It's very oily and horrible inside. Uh, I'll add the heads off which is good because I should be able to get them on and off again easily and what I've just done is loosened that bolt there and with this piece of 8th inch welding wire I'm going to make a little pointer that will loop round there come up here and stick across here like this and then I will show you how to establish a top dead centre mark I'm just going to poke the dirt out. Obviously if you're building this engine you'd do it all nice. You know, you'd have a nice engine, it'd be all clean and on an engine stand, but I'm just trying to show you how you don't have to be too fancy with this. I've got this same, exact same pointer on my Roadster. Okay, let's clean that out. I'm gonna, I'll get some pliers and I'll kind of use this to help me because it's the same diameter as that. This bolt comes out but you can't actually get it out without taking the pulley off so I'm gonna make it hard for myself by doing it with the pulley in place <laughs> now this is crap I'm gonna do it better than that I'll take the pulley off too tight anyway look that might be enough tiny bit more your results may vary interesting that that's a captive washer in fact they all are so that was that was obviously the the captive washer is obviously the spec for uh, the 59a um, Okay, I'm going to go off camera and do a better job of making the pointer. I've made it like a complete loop and then bent it so it comes off from the centre line instead of coming off the edge. I then put a little offset juggle in it there. What I'm just doing now, I'm just offering it in. And I want to bend it straight out, right to the way to here. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to bend it in that area there. I'll go and do that off camera and then come back. Put the 90 degree bend in and as usual, I've mislaid the uh, spanner I was using, so I've had to go and get another one. So what I'm going to do now is just cut it off there. And then I'll sharpen like a chisel point on it like that. So there's the pointer. And I put like a chisel edge on it. What I've just done is I've just shortened the point back because I had it in the wrong place because what I forgot was the pulley needs to be there. It 
don't need to go too mad because this engine will be coming apart. Now, some people are concerned about this. You know, you fit it at a different angle and you might lose your mark, but you can't really because it's on a tangent from that bolt. Unless you bend this, this isn't going to change, so you have to be careful not to catch that. But anyway, nonetheless, that's fitted now. And I've had one like this on my Roadster for 15 years, and it's okay. So let's now look at the stop method for setting the top dead centre. On a flathead, this is the front, this is the right bank, and that is number one cylinder. What you need is a solid piece of metal that will bridge this thing. You can bolt it between there and there, for instance. What you mustn't do is make sure you, that you don't come over the valve. I've got a clamping set for my milling machine, and that will go across there quite nicely. And then you need a spacer there so you can get the nut on. So basically, I'm going to use all these clamps. You know, you just use whatever you got. A bit of angle iron, a bit of bar, any bit of metal with a whole hole in it that you can bolt down flat to the head face. Now you can only do this on a flathead because the flathead's got domed pistons. The pistons come above the surface so what will happen is that the piston will come up until it touches that stop. Now that stop is quite solid Obviously you don't go mad and try turning it past it because you'll, you'll damage something but you turn it until you hit the stop. So I'll try and just get the camera so it can see the pulley and the stop. It's going a bit sunny now. Yeah I think you can see. Yeah you can see that. That's what you do. There's your piston. So I'm turning it carefully. Clunk. There. But that's against the stop now. I wind it back now so I kind of develop a feel for it. So. Bump. There's the stop. So what we do now, we need to put a mark on this pulley in line with this this pointer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some tape on here and draw a mark with a pen. Back in a sec. So I wound it clockwise against the stop. It's against the stop. And there we are. We're going to put a mark directly in line with that there. Oh. <laughs> well if your pen don't work, just scratch a hole straight through the tape like that. So that's in line with the marker. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is uh, reverse the ratchet and we'll go handheld just for a minute so you can watch the piston. And I'm going to run the piston all the way down. That's why you don't have the um, near the valve, because the valve has to come up, you see. I'm going to wind it back until it just goes against the stop again. Ready? Clunk. There. That's not applying a lot of force. Oh. Would you believe it? Look, Sod's Law. Sod's Law dictates, doesn't it? It's not on the uh, tape. So, I'm going to get a fresh piece of tape. So this is the anti-clockwise mark here. So do it in tangent, tangential to the middle of the pulley. Like that. Right, you got the idea. So what I'll do now, I want it clockwise till it hits the stop again. There. Okay. 
So here's our marks. There. So what you now have to do is basically measure that distance there, go halfway and then that's your mark there for top dead centre. So, well we might as well just do it, eh? I'll go and get a ruler. A little bit awkward working around the camera but let's have a look at this, what's that? I'm trying to measure it in line with the edge of the thing. Well, that's two inches, isn't it? So if I put a mark at one inch and then project that out to the edge like that, what you would then do, you would get your hacksaw and file a little mark there, just there. But what I'm going to do now is repeat this Anyway, that's it, that's how you do it. That's so you go halfway between the two and put your mark there. Now I'm doing this a bit quick and you know, for the sake of a demo. If I was doing it for real, I'd take a bit more care about it. So that there is exactly your top dead centre there, halfway between the two marks. You know, and if you were working spotlessly clean and with really nice things, it would work better. But what I'll do now is repeat it now with the head on using the cable tie method okay back in a minute okay here's the cylinder head nice crusty example and the, what you want to do is get the cable tie roughly around about that position there you need to come in through the plug hole and have it about there now it just so happens that this cable tie has a bend in it just there which is handy isn't it because it's just sitting at the right place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through until the bend just comes by the edge of the plug hole and then we'll use that as a stop I hope this is big enough it might be that you need a slightly bigger one than this but the head needs to be on but I just wanted to show you that to give you the idea of the principle. So just out of interest, that is two and a half inches, roughly. Roughly two and a half inches. Two and a half inches would work, you know, if you're doing one without having the benefit of a head to look at. Okay, I'll put the head on. Obviously, if you were doing this method, You'd normally, um, you know, the head would already be on. You wouldn't be. Okay. I must admit, I've never used this method myself in anger, but I have heard it talked about, so I thought I'd look at it, you know, anyway. Right, there's no stop on it now, so what I'm going to do is wind it. I know where top dead centre is, so I'm going to wind it back pre top dead centre that's gone anti-clockwise here's my cable tie I'll put it down the hole try and bend it round the corner I might be hitting the valve actually what's going on well, I don't want to go around the bend need to put another bend in it like that look that's gone so I'm putting it Print it down until the bend, that bend in the carbon tie is just on the edge there. And I'm going to come clockwise like that until it stops. And that's just stopped there. Like, like before, I'm going to just kind of test my judgment by winding it off and putting it on again. There's the bend. Bump. There. There's the top dead centre. So I'm going to put another mark on. Oh. You 
might be able to see me do it. Because the camera's on the tripod, but I'm going to put another mark on there. I don't know if you can see me doing it. This pen's useless. There's the mark. Would help if I'd actually put it in the right place, but hey, you get the idea. So let's concentrate back on the top end again. Getting sunny here now. Right, so what did I go there clockwise? So now I'm going to go anti clockwise. I've left the thing down the hole. I'm not sure if you should do it or not, but what I'll do before I come up, I'll kind of reposition it to where it was before, like that. And I'll come up anti-clockwise there. That's just stopped. Let's do that again. Anti-clockwise bump. Mm, okay. There's the mark. So that mark there and that mark there, the right hand one of the two, were done by the cable tie. So if I go halfway between those two, it's actually, I would guess, just very, very slightly that side. So those two marks with the C are the, with the cable tie. And if I would measure that, like I say, the right hand one of these two is the right mark. I would measure that as one and a quarter. So if you go to the five eighths, it is actually within a fraction of that. It's about a tiny bit to the left of that. So I would say that the cable tie method for a built up engine is perfectly good enough to get you a representative top dead centre within a, a degree or two. If you had the engine apart and could use a solid stop, that would be the best method. And you can always do that at a later date if and when you have the heads off. Right then. Going held, handheld, shaky cam. The firing order on a flathead is one five four eight six three seven two. The reason I pause is because I wanted to say the first four and then the second four. One five four eight six three seven two. And on a V eight, the the first number in the first four and the first number in the second four are at top dead centre at the same time. We've established this is the top dead centre mark here. So I'm going to wind that to top dead centre. I don't know if I was pointing at that then, but you know, we've already established this, haven't we? This is the top dead centre mark there. There, now, just as I'm approaching it, keep your eye on this cylinder. There. That cylinder is number six, because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on a flathead. That's the way they're numbered. So what we need to watch is the exhaust valve on number six. That's on top dead centre. This one's just fired. Number six is just fired. So as we go around, the exhaust is open now, as we're kind of opposite to top dead centre. And then it comes round, and as this approaches top dead centre, the exhaust closes there, and as we go past top dead centre, a little bit more, the inlet opens. This is described as the valves are rocking, because if you imagine it on an overhead valve car, the rockers are just 
you know, one's open and the other's closed. So, as those are rocking, that means this one isn't firing. So if I take that back, like that. So basically, if you are watching the exhaust valve, and you've got your top dead centre mark, so you're watching number six exhaust valve. Let's go back a bit further. So number six exhaust valve is open. So you're winding it round, and you're watching number six exhaust valve. As you see that that has just closed now. And there's your top dead centre mark, there. That is the point at which your number one should be firing, you know, rather four, four degrees before. So, but you, you've established that this is the point where your number one is firing, not number six. It can only be number one or number six. It's number one. Now the important thing about this you can see this valve through the plug hole so when you've got this head on you can take the plug out and you can watch the valve through the plug hole so if you're doing all this work with the heads on and I'll demonstrate that I'll go I'll put the head on and show you we'll back in a sec right I don't know if the camera can see it but I can see in the daylight that I can see the valve down there. I've got my pen as well. So what I'm going to do is wind the engine over. Now, can you see that that valve is lifting? I can feel it because I can see it on my pen. You can see it pushing the pen up. Okay. It's just started going back down now. So, at that moment, that valve has started to go down. And the marks are coming round. So as that valve is going down, and these marks are coming round, you can say that that valve will have just closed at that point there. And it has. If you were really keen what you could do is continue to look and you can just about see the inlet valve in that direction there because it's over the inlet port there and you would see them see them rocking so it's not as easy with the heads on but you can you can do it so again that point there oops straps in the way that point there is the top dead centre for both cylinders and that is the one at where the number one is firing and if you look down the end of the distribu distributor hole you can see the offset slot in the end of the cam and you can can you see that you can just see a part of the center of the cam there but you can't see that side that means the offset slot the offset slot is offset in that direction to, towards my finger so number one firing here the cam is offset up here towards this port you know towards 45 degrees over this way sort of thing the, ca the cam's on a bit of a tilt at the moment but if you look level you can get the relationship between the cam and the offset and that's that's why it's very important to offer the distributor in gently because you can force the tangs into the, the wrong way around and then you're in a whole world of trouble. You will destroy the distributor. Okay, 
I hope you found that helpful. Um, it's all, there's always lots of questions being asked on Ford Barn about top dead centre and things like that and the cable tie method. So, although I'd prefer to use the positive stuff, I'd do it at a pinch just to, you know, as a sanity check more than anything because it's, it's not invasive. You don't, you know, you don't have to take anything apart other than maybe loosen the front pulley. But anyway, you, you gotta do that for both of them. So I hope you enjoyed popping in today and dropping by and seeing what I'm up to. Don't forget to uh, click like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you very much for visiting. Bye.